Mom Redding Kid here back again. Welcome back to Indie Showcase. I am your host, Mom Burning Kid, back again with some more comic reviews from various indie comic book companies. Indie Showcase is where I, Mom Burning Kid, review comics from the highest indie comic book companies to the smallest and all around. That's what we do. And today we are still in the realm of Xenoscope and we are talking about another character that I really enjoy. And on today's issue, we are reviewing can't really get the, get the glare. We're reviewing Van Helsing Beast of Exmar. Uh, this is written by, uh, I want to make sure I get the name. Uh, this is written by Brian Hawkins. Brian Hawkins does the, uh, writing and the artwork is done by Alan Otero. Really good. Van Helsing, of course, she is the descendant of the legendary Van Helsing. And she is the resident monster hunter of uh, the Xenoscope universe. And in this, uh, she takes a case. She takes a... Uh, Leslie takes a, a job in... I forgot the name of the country. It's... Uh, Exmoor. It's... It's in... It's like a small uh village in the uk and they're they're being terrorized by this beast uh who is killing people and he's bloodthirsty and uh she goes in to she takes the job not only not only does she take it she is with kind of her boyfriend or someone that really cares about her his name is rick and he he she likes Rick. She she even goes on to say that she somewhat loves him, but she still keeps walls closed to him. She doesn't want him to get too close because at the end of the day, what she does could get him killed. And she and he does know what she is and how old she is because she's very old. She's older than she looks. But here this series it plays off like an old school universal monster uh uh movie she goes in she assesses the situation assesses what the villagers can do and things like that getting getting 411 on what's going on and who is doing this and you know how long the, this beast has this creature has been terrorizing them uh, those are the things that she does as a skilled hunter. But then she starts to realize that maybe the villagers are not telling everything. And that's where the plot thickens. The plot thickens there that maybe this beast, as you can see on the cover, is more than what they're telling. And it is true. The beast is, and one of the villagers knows the beast and is protecting it because it is a curse, but it's a family curse. Unfortunately, it doesn't end well for the beast. And of course, what that, you know, you would probably know what that means. She has no choice but to kill it. Uh, but it was this was a, a very fun one shot um, story with I would say probably consequences and I shouldn't say because it does kind of have consequences because you'll see why um, but it was still fun I enjoyed it very much I thought Mr Hawkins did a good job with the writing and I enjoyed Mr Otero's uh, artwork. I can show you a little bit of it, you know, just, it was really good. Uh, one of my, I would, 
I love the. Here's a good scene of Van Helsing and the Beast fighting. Look at that artwork. That's just really good artwork right there. Uh, very good indeed. Uh, but this was really good. Very much enjoyed uh, Van Helsing, uh, Beast of Ekmore. Ekmore. And with that, that, that throws us into, into the next story. And this was a two-part story called, if I can get it out, <laughs> uh, called Van Helsing and Van, Van Helsing, Return of the League of Monsters, part one of part two. Why was this so good? I can tell you why. One, the man himself, Pat Shunt. Is writing it. I I'm glad. I was glad to see his name on a Zenoscope book again. Um, I am friends with Pat on on Facebook and things like that, and I've always been a big supporter of his writing. He does really good good writing. This is basically um, all the monsters that that. Uh, Van Helsing has come across in her time from the Invisible Woman to the Beast of Ekmore that I just reviewed to Dracula's Daughter to the Frankenstein Monster. They all come together to fight Van Helsing. And once again, we see, you know, Lindsay, uh, Leslie basically being who she is, Rick, the man that she's kind of with, accepting who she is and trying to get more stories out of her. Like, oh, so what was what was England like back in this time? And and she would tell him and she actually likes that about him. Like he's she's he's not kind of scared or intimidated by the fact that she's this legendary monster hunter. And that's when all hell breaks loose again, um, this time around, because they all band together. And what what's even more is that you think what you think is just one thing. It's just these people banding together. The story plot thickens really quick, especially at the end, because um, it's all about Dracula's daughter. She wants revenge on Van Helsing. Now, these characters have been in other stories in the past. So if you've never read any of Van Helsing's uh, stories, then I suggest you go to Zenoscope.com or wherever you get your books and try to find these. Some of them are in trades and things like that. Like, like I said, Van Helsing versus uh, the Invisible Woman and things like that. It's the Invisible Woman. It's not the Invisible Man in this. But uh, something bad happens to Rick. Something seriously bad happens to Rick. And she, Van Helsing blames herself for that. Uh, and that leads us into... And that leads us into part two of the same story. Once again, what you thought the centered story was about the, the, the lead of monsters coming together, it was more than that. It was more. As we all know, some, something bad happens to Rick. I don't want to spoil it. Uh, Rick is Leslie's, uh, Van Helsing's, you know, friend or boyfriend. Uh, but someone from the past, a former lover from her past, returns who is that well i don't know if i should tell you but i can tell you one thing he's a god and he died not too long ago um and because of that he takes all the lead monsters and take them down to the underworld to hate to, to the underworld 
and are using him. So it becomes now a story of the enemy of my enemy is my friend with Van Helsing and the League of Monsters. And, you know, even some of them even saying like, look, I'll, I will help. But that person, the whole main antagonist gets revealed. And then, but Van Helsing is no fool. She knows that this can't be the same person that I loved. And we find out she's right. And unfortunately, she has to do the one thing that she didn't want to do, you know, because of this person. Well, I can reveal it. I guess I should reveal who this God is. Hades. Hades is, is, um, is the former lover of Van Helsing. Uh, Hades also has a child in the Xenoscope universe. Uh, her name is, uh, her name is, a uh, uh, hell child. She's half vampire and half demigod. So she's, yeah, she's a vampire and a half demigod. She's a demigod. Her boyfriend was a vampire, bit her. And so imagine that you got turned to a vampire, but you're also a demigod. There you go. Uh, but yeah, um, she has to deal with that, deal with the consequences of who this person really is. The twist of who the this this fake, this false god was is really interesting. Um, and she was able to even save Rick to the point where she had to give up. To keep him protected, she gave up being with him at the end. Um, I thought that was really touching. But the code and just cause of a, a hero, a warrior, to protect the person you love, you have to may have to give up. Uh, Pat Shant did a good job, um, uh, did a good job of writing this. Um, like I said, you know, I give you some, once again, the artwork in here, which was done by, uh, I wanna make sure I get the art name right. Uh, Alexandro Uzu, Uzu, I hope I'm saying the name right. But here's some of like the artwork. There's like Hades in there and um, show you some more of the, as you can see some of the Legion monsters, there's the Invisible Woman and Frankenstein's monster and things like that. Zenoscope does a good job of just changing a lot of things, but for the better. And these covers are beautiful. Like I said, she just has a really good cover. Um, but overall, this was good. This is good stuff. Uh, there's some more one shots from Xenoscope that I do recommend. I know they come out. Xenoscope just does a really good job with turning these classic characters from, let's say, Beauty and the Beast, Belle. She's She's Belle, the beast hunter, like she hunts, or the Black Knight is a lawyer by day, but becomes this armored female because she's female. Then you got Robin Hood and Van Helsing. Little Red Riding Hood is like Black Widow, but also can turn into a werewolf. It's stuff like that. The stuff that they come up with, Princess Jack, oh my God. The stuff that Xenoscope comes up with is just it's just breathtaking, and you you love every minute of it. I've all, I've been a fan for a long time, and anytime I get a chance to read uh, Xenoscope books, I'm I'm happy because I'm like they do good work. You're always gonna get a, a good idea. I know some people don't like the one shot feel; it's like they can't really keep up. But trust me, if you you know these characters, you'll be able to keep up with them. Trust me. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was another video from Xenoscope for Indie Showcase. I love Xenoscope. It is a really good company. The twists and the what they are able to do with the franchises is great. Now, don't forget to like and 
and leave your comments in the section down below if you've read any of these Zenoscope books. This is Indie Showcase. I'm your host, My Brain Kid. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time with more from Indie Showcase. Deuces.